Hey everybody, we're back with part two of When Models Talk with Jacinth Hedlum. She will be getting back to us very soon. We just did part one. Hello, Anger Dr. Tyra. Hey. Um, yeah, she'll be back. We just did part one. We're doing part two now, finishing up our talk with Jacinth. Hedlum, amazing actress, mother, producer, model. Hey, here she go. Hey, new video productions. We're just waiting for it. Hey. <laughs> We're just waiting for Justin. Hey. Hey, <laughs> hey. Now part two. Uh -huh. All right, so my um question am i on the right i, I pray i'm on the right um no yeah, you're on the same one yeah okay really came just in. making sure because it, it said I'm, I'm going live <laughs> okay so now when it comes to back to birthing mm -hmm. well no perseverance when right. you have a goal and you said that you, when you hear something or when you think of something dream of something vision whatever it is how do you not how do you relight that flame because you know how you're working on something mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like it's like it's like come on and then that flame kind of starts dying as you know you don't see results or whatever it is how mm -hmm. do you keep that flame lit or do you just do, is your flame always lit no my flame is my flame is not always lit at all because there's time where i lose um, my zeal. I just, I'm not as motivated. I just need to reinvent myself. Even recently, um, this year with acting, I was just mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I'm just like out of it. I, I think I just want to stick more to like working in the background, just producing and, and mm -hmm. just putting out content and just building my production company up right now. Mm -hmm. And then I just thought about it and I'm like, but I love acting. It's nothing like telling stories. It's nothing like delivering mm -hmm. that story from, the lens of another character that I just transform into like that is so artistic and creative to me to because I'm yeah. visual so to like to 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 transform the visual from screen from script to to performing to script from screen from the script to performing to then to screen is just to like wow to see the finished <laughs> work and to be the face of a project and to deliver this message I think yeah. it's so powerful and I just think for me, I just had to learn to reinvent myself. So I just started taking class again and mm -hmm. just to really tap in and just be around different actors and do scene work and just, mm -hmm. and it definitely, um, shout out to Anthony Abelson. Um, I'm enrolled in his class and he's one of the best of the best in New York City. And you can't awesome. just join Anthony Abelson's class. Like you have to audition. And if he sees something special that that's there and he can see you going places, then you will be accepted into his acting class. But Anthony Abelson is the man. He's the bomb. He's the bomb.com. So awesome. yeah, I had, I definitely lost my zeal with acting. And when I started to take classes again, to reinvent that thing, mm -hmm. to, to, to reignite that fire under me and mm -hmm. in me for um, that part of the, the craft, um, it definitely worked. So you always have to find ways to just step away Mm -hmm. You know, probably step away, regroup, rethink, take some time off, miss it. If you miss it, then it's like, okay, that's that magnetic pull that letting you know mm. that you can't run from this thing because it's just something yeah. that's just, in, it just planned to keep you. It's just, it's just yeah. there. But if you step away and you're like relieved and you don't mm -hmm. miss it, you're like, uh-uh, uh-uh, it doesn't give me peace. It doesn't bring yeah. me joy. It felt like it was a headache more than giving me my joy you know um my heart joy then mm -hmm. you know that you did the right thing that it's not really for you yes because when you mm -hmm. just like you said that magnetic pull like, yeah you, you just know, have that pull what's going on like and then i think when especially when you're doing something and as soon as you think about it as soon as you even start working towards it it's just like oh my gosh i'm doing this again that's what you're supposed to be doing yeah like yeah. that's your, that's uh your soul, what, whatever it is, just saying to you, you know, yeah. this is what we're, we're in our, we're, this is our jish. This is what we're mm -hmm. supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I get so excited when I see actors. And that's, girl, when I saw you, we're all like, 
Yeah. Thank you. I love your real. Thank you the so music, much. The music, the film. I'm like, okay, so we're going to Well, I don't know, girl. Well. Maybe you need to tell these representations, these reps, to check my reel out because I just feel like I just, I, I, and I'm just going to be transparent transparent because oftentimes a lot of people are not transparent they just want to make it look like everything is all gravy but I'm just in a I, I would say for me with acting right now I'm just in a rut I just feel like I don't have the right team I don't have the right representation they don't really know how to market me they don't really know me they don't really like I just feel like they're just not a right representation for me so I'm just like huh to have to start all over to have to now you know, look for new representation and start that relationship all over again and just sit still and wait till they start sending me out. But it's like, <laughs> that's nothing different than now because they're not sending me out for the stuff that I want. I mean, yeah, to go out for commercial and print is cool, but I want to mm -hmm. do legit work. I want to do TV and film. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I just want to work. And I'm just, yeah. it's not happening for me. And that's why I had to get to producing my own content where I just, yeah. I'm like, if if the only way I can really tell stories the the ones I want to tell and play the characters I want to play is I have to mm -hmm. write it and do it myself, then I guess I gotta do this job myself. Yeah, because it's like I don't know these casting directors that's that's you know that's doing these films. I can't mm -hmm. make them book me. Yeah, and the, it's not like the breakdown come directly to the talent. It doesn't. You know, mm -hmm. it goes straight to the reps. So all I can say, hey, are you guys submitting me? Like, I'm not even going in for co-star roles. Like, have you, like, I'm a working actor. Like, yeah. like, and I want, it's not working as if I'm on TV right now doing a mm -hmm. recurring role, but how can I get in the door if I'm not being seen? How exactly. can I book if I'm not even getting the opportunity to even audition? Like, if I'm doing auditions mm -hmm. back to back to back and I'm not booking, at least I know that, they like what they see so they keep wanting to see me that's a good thing mm -hmm. but to not even get the opportunity to audition it was just like yo what is going on so it, it's definitely not crack it's not it's not as easy as a scene because yeah. like for me i have great headshots i have mm -hmm. great body of work my arsenal is together my website is together my reel is together my resume mm -hmm. is together um, I'm out here still working. If I'm not acting, I'm producing. If I'm not doing that, I'm writing. I'm still working. But it's yeah. like after a while, sometimes I'm not going to front. Sometimes it does get discouraging because you're yeah. not. It's, but I, I did my part. I feel like I'm yeah. doing as much as I can. And if the breakdown is coming directly to me, I'll be on it. I'll be calling. I'll be communicating. <laughs> I'll be connecting. But one of my friends said something to me He um, last night. He was just like, you know, you just have to go straight to those captains, casting directors yourself. Let them know your face. Oh, so that means you gotta, if you got to be in their classroom for, he said, don't do them one to two day workshop because you're forgettable like that. But if you're with them for like a good four weeks, eight weeks, like three months, these so casting directors, they'll remember you. So I, that's what I'm going to do. My homework for this week is to just look at some casting directors who are booking the shows that I really want to be on mm -hmm. or that I can see myself and my type mm -hmm. on. And mm -hmm. just seeing if I can really just get on their radar and just take some of their workshops. I mean, take some of their classes, if they have any. Um, right now, it's a pandemic, so there ain't much going on. Um, yeah. But just pretty much Zoom. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to be transparent. Like, I have all this arsenal, but it's not always that easy as it, as it seems. Yeah. So, but, yeah. but my encouragement to you is to keep going and just finding ways to reinvent yourself. And... You know, you're not always going to be being sent out for, for auditions all the time. So what do you do yeah. in your downtime? Find other ways to be productive. Find other ways to create. Um, like Janelle is on this line. I know her. She's an amazing actress as well. And I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure she can say she's not getting sent out like that. But she's doing photography. She's still being creative. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she's also producing. She always She's also doing other things in the entertainment realm. Mm -hmm. um, where she can still tap into her creative juices and still be, in, you know, she can still create art. So mm -hmm. I think for me, that's what I have to do so I don't become, like, kind of blah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm like, okay, let me just create my own content, even if I got to make baby steps, because you just never know. I think for me, you just got to give God something to bless. Yeah. When he shows that you're being faithful over the few, he can make you rulers of many. 
If you're yep. being obedient and you're tapping into your gift, your gifts will make room for you. Meaning that your gift will, will open up so many doors for you. And um, to the point where you pour in out blessings, you don't even have room enough to receive. But as long exactly. as you're saying yes to yourself and you're being obedient and you're being in alignment and you're not sure. standing there, but you're putting your faith where you're, you know, you're putting your work where your faith is. Like mm -hmm. you have to just find ways to just keep going, just keep working at it. Um without spreading yourself too thin and and mm -hmm. and overextending yourself so you're not losing focus yes yeah yes like just because i i agree with everything you just said because at the end of the day I, like i said when sing when you're in your 30s <laughs> right even before that when you're getting close to your 30s you know what you get to a time you get to a place in your life where you're just like especially if you're modeling acting mm -hmm. you're like what else can i do Especially you, if you have representation that's right. not going hard for you, like you know you would go for yourself. Right. You're just like, okay, wait a minute. I've, ch I've chosen to not be with representation because of that reason alone. Me, I'm like, I know what I can do. Mm -hmm. I know what I can't do. And if I can't do it, I'm going to figure out how I can do it. Yeah, yeah so, right. And I think it starts also with a plan. If you know that you want to be this model in this location, this actor in this location, and do these type of things. Right. It starts out with a plan of how am I going to get it done? Who do I need to talk to? And actually opening your mouth and saying, let me reach out to this person. The reason mm -hmm. why I got into New York Fashion Week when I did get in New York Fashion Week was because yeah. I opened my mouth. I reached out to people. People didn't like me. People say I was going to be black bone. <laughs> wow. Everything. Because they was like, you can't reach out to the people directly. You have to go through this. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? First of all, I reached out to them, and that's how I got your information. Wow. And then other people were like, because they, uh, you have to introduce yourself. You can't right. think that you're not going, like, oh, they're just going to come past, come past my stuff. But somehow, out of millions of people, billions of people on this earth, they're just going to happen to run into your stuff. You actually have to, have to open your mouth and actually right. say something. I've, yeah. I use social media. I reached out to people. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. I want to be on this show. Well, I did my research first mm -hmm. to find out who's who and who right. I, where I wanted to walk for. And then right. I reached out to them people directly. And some people don't control their own accounts, but they do have other people controlling that will relay the message. And when you right. do that, which you're not only introducing yourself, if you're a model, mm -hmm. give your information. Say, right. I'm this size, I'm that tall. I know I would look great in your show. And compliment mm -hmm. somebody and say, I, I just see myself working with you, something. But if you right. never put action behind it, you're just talking mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just going to be more of talk and it's never going to happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, like you said. So definitely reach out to as much people as possible because, again, you have all the content, but just again with you with patience. You got to remember. Yeah, I'm impatient. Because God, God might be actually getting things in order for you that people ain't ready. Like right. you got all your stuff together, so you you ahead of the game. Come on, but, somebody. But at the end of the day, he's still getting them together for the role that you're going to play. That's right that's on the big screen. Because when on, I saw that original, I was like, "Why is she ain't on like this big movie? Like, why is right. she not? I need to see her on Netflix. Right, I need to right. see her in the um in the theater. Thank I don't you. know about the theater. I don't know how, what's going to happen in the theater going over Crow. I need but, to be on somebody's screen. <laughs> right. I love somebody's it. Platform. I love it. Thank I you. Like, Thank you so good. much. And I get so excited when I see people that are talented, especially in their craft. I'm just like, okay, so how did you do it? It's like a kid in a candy store. Like, how did you do it, girl? Because, when, like I said, when I saw that reel, I was like, she played a cop. And it was natural. Like, she played every role naturally. Thank how you. do you play a crackhead? And a prostitute. And some other stuff. And I'm like, I, me, you know, we're going to work on my acting skills. <laughs> I do commercials. <laughs> no, I mean, I, like you were saying, it's just all about, like, like you said, being patient. You know, I, I did the work. I made sure that I did my part and, and just mm -hmm. finding finding other ways to reinvent myself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just, just to reinvent myself um, as I, as I, I wait. Mm -hmm. And... I just find other outlets where I can still create, like still create content, still write, mm -hmm. still get my stuff out there. So, you know, just still trying to make sure that I'm active 
I'm not, you know, falling into that yeah. slump. Because I know a lot of actors who go into straight depression when their phones aren't ringing. They're not getting that email. They're not getting sent in for work. And it, it, can, it can definitely be depressing if you allow it to, for sure. Mm. And what so. I also like what you said, you, well, what you did. And that was, you weren't afraid to go back and take an acting class. Some people get to the point where they're just like, I'm excellent at this. I don't need, you know, I'm not, I don't need to do all that. No, but it's a like, constant you know growing, man. You're constantly growing. You're constant because it's a, it's a muscle. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like singing. Like if you don't mm -hmm. sing, you going to get rusty. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't sing and work that muscle and train that muscle, you, you get really pitchy and you get really a little froggy down there. It's a little wetty, <laughs> you know, cause I, I sung when I was like, you know, when I was younger, but I haven't sung in so long. So now yeah. in, in me trying to even dibble dabble back into singing, I now have to like get the, the, the pipe going again, get that muscle. Mm -hmm. Like with acting, if I'm, I, I'm sitting here and I'm not acting and I'm not watching no movie, I'm not reading no script. I'm not tapping into those muscles. Um, mm -hmm. It, it, it's kind of like you fall into that blah, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it's just like constantly just, just working at it, working at it because you don't, you don't know. I always say just be ready so you don't have to get ready because the worst thing you want is to an opportunity come and you're not ready. You will always forever beat up on yourself for it. Girl, you know? and then I mean, trying to you, rush yeah. and do it. Trying to yeah. rush and get ready. You right. know what I mean? to rush and get ready? And they Girl, me too. And I was like, there's a lot of time I had to rush and get ready <laughs> because I wasn't ready. So, yeah, I try to be ready. Yeah. So let's talk about when you said about producing, producing your own so to keep that flame, to keep it going and create content, especially when you're, if you may not be getting the calls that you want. What are some things that you have produced and how did you make that happen? Um, I, I was a producer on, of course, a lot of people know Diary of a Bad Man. Um, I became a producer more so on the post end, like post production, mm -hmm. uh, because I was able to help it to like, you know, get into festival, get a theatrical distribution, get it in the theaters, like, you know, in the Caribbean. So mm -hmm. um, that's how come I became a producer on that. And then I saw like, just to see the work behind the scenes and what goes into that from scratch, mm -hmm. because when Dem, Dem Raye was writing Diary of a Bad Man, I was literally there from when it was just a thought. And yeah, he wrote he wrote Detective Williams, Simone Williams for me because he's like, Do you know mm -hmm. Pato? Do you know how to go in and out of Pato? And I'm like, Yeah. So he said fluently, I'm fluently and I'm like, Yeah. So he wrote that role for me. So to see it the whole process and that was my first feature film that wow. I've ever done. Um and then I, I just got that thing of just wanting to to be more behind the scenes and just mm -hmm. wanting to to be a part of that whole storytelling ordeal. Yeah. Um and then um, about a couple of years ago, I did another TV show pilot that I produced with um, my girlfriend, and I don't want to talk about it because you know we it never went into full manifestation, so I don't mm -hmm. want to say names yeah. and titles and all of that. So we're gonna leave that where it's at. And then um, recently, last year, I went, I did my own documentary, um, I'm Jacinth, Love After, that goes with my book, and that was done by oh, Sector Blue, uh -huh. Jason Packer, and um, Jane, um, mm -hmm. Applegate, so, and yeah, and all three of us, we went to Jamaica, and we filmed it, and there was some great Aww. footage, I definitely, I'm going to talk to them and see, like, being at the festival is pretty much, the festival run is pretty much done, mm -hmm. about just, like, releasing it, but I'm still shopping some stuff around right now, okay. um, for, like, a, a television, television television series. Oh, my God, I can't talk. I think it's a two-hour live thing that I've got my concert to. But I love you, girl. I'll be on here for another hour. <laughs> but um, but just um, so I don't know if I can release that yet because I'm right now I'm, I'm still – so yeah. once that once I find out when I can release it, I want to release that definitely this year so people can see. Yeah, because I'm like, what can I see? Stuff. I want to see it. Yeah, I, I mean, I can send you a private link. I'll definitely send you a private link. I have a link to it. It's, it's just not. It's unlisted. So I'll send it to you. You can see it. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, I want to see. I, I was like, I want to see where, where, where are these clips from? I want to see them. Yeah, where now I can definitely send it to you. I mean, you can find um, Diary of a Bad Man on Amazon. If you have Amazon, it's um, Di Diary of a uh, Bad Man, B-A-D-M-A-N. That's on Amazon. Um, 
if even if you search through my name, that will pop up as well. Amazon Prime. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Writing that down. And also, anybody that wants to see the uh, one of the latest films that I was on, Lola, um, I was on there yeah. as an actress and also as an executive producer, that mm -hmm. was accepted into the um, American Black Film Festival, which is a very well-known, prestigious film festival for our people, by our people. So it's yeah. big. Like, I'm yeah. like, yeah, we out here doing it. Um, so that will be released, I believe, the 21st. Um, this month? Yeah, so this week. Is it Thursday? I, I'm on here. I don't even have the full date. but um, That's tomorrow. Yeah, Antoine Allen's page. Yeah, oh, my God. I, I don't know why I keep thinking today's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it will be released tomorrow on American Black Film Festival page, or you can go to abff.com. Um, so you can see Lola, which is a boxing, female boxing film, starred oh. with Taja um, P. Simpson. So, so that will be released tomorrow. So you guys will oh. be able to see that and any other film that they have going on. They definitely have some great lineup. And if you follow American Black Film Festival page, there's some great lineup. So definitely go and check, check them out and support Support our artists, man. Support, support, support. So when they see your views, then that that creates more open mm -hmm. doors. And when doors open for us, doors yep. open for people around us. And then mm -hmm. one hand washes the other. Yep. So, yeah. Well, that's good. I'm happy for y'all. Thank you. Thank you. The festival. Yeah, so I'm excited. I can't wait for you guys to see it tomorrow. So, yeah, go look on abff.com or American Black Film Festival Instagram page. They're posting everything on there, their whole lineup, trailers, and all of that. You'll be able to see everything on their page for sure. So I'm definitely going to check that out tomorrow because Thank I want to see it. And I'm like, okay, so where's she at? I'll be looking for <laughs> <laughs> like, Thank where's she you. Thank and I saw, um, matter of fact, that might be the. You were on, but I don't know if I want to say it. It's called Bubbly Brown, Brown Bubbly. Oh, yes. Uh, but no, Bubbly that's not Brown. what you want to talk about? No, no, no. For mine, it was, an, it was a TV pilot that I produced um, a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was with um like Yandy Smith from Love and Hip Hop. I had her on the cast. Um, I had Terrell Hicks from Bronx Tale and Belly. Um, it was with my girlfriend, my sister friend Tanya Thompson. We were co-produced it together. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just a you know a team of us, and it, it definitely could have been something great. But it's a lot that goes into stuff like that with like budget and and, yeah. and just making sure you come out with the best footage because. Yeah. With with this 2020, everybody is so many people. So many people are creating their own content. Yeah. And what's going to set you apart from others are quality. Yes, yeah. you can have the dope Agreed. content, but if people can't hear you, they don't they care how pretty you look. Clear. And if people can't see clear, they don't care how great how great it sounds you and how good the acting is. So for me, it's quality and quality great quality costs you know sometimes you get what you pay for you don't want a yeah. penny pinch when it comes to like making sure you have the right camera crew and the right yeah. sound guy and the right lighting guy you want to make sure that our skin come on somebody our life yeah. prop or we got we gotta be lit properly yes so <laughs> you, you can't cut corners and i see there's some people who are into filmmaking and they cut corners and your stuff start looking crazy yeah. And first impression is everything. So I don't want to put out anything that's going to be looking crazy. That's yeah. under my production. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, anything that's tied to me producing it and is, is, you know, I'm a part of creating this content and it's my, you know, I'm a part of the, the baby brain mm -hmm. behind it. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that it's done good. So, you know, we want to we want to take our time to get the money right and to do it properly. Yes. Sure. And because I know how I am when I work, when I do anything, I don't like anything that look bootleg. I don't like anything mm -hmm. that's, you know, not 100% professional. Because the thing is, I've been to, like, I think when people expose themselves to different things, as far as things they see, that mm -hmm. comes off very professional, you have a different mindset. Okay, I want that. I don't want this. I want that because it looks so good. Yeah. And I've been to um, different modeling events just a whole bunch of stuff and i'm like, oh my gosh like when i do an event it needs to look like this right right, right. Like, so it, that's why you have to have time 
you have to have patience. You have to actually plan properly and get with the right team. I turn a lot of people down because they're like, well, Katrice, you want to do this? You want to do this photo shoot? You want to do um, this commercial? Wear this? And I'm like, that don't go with my brand. Right. And I, and the but thing that's is, what happens when you know yourself and you know your purpose. You know how to make sure everything that everything that you do have to kind of revolve around that. But yeah. once you once you know your purpose and your vision and where you're heading and it's clear, mm -hmm. then everything that you do going forward has to complement where you're going. Yeah. If yeah. it's pulling you away and it doesn't make sense from your brand mm -hmm. and your your mm -hmm. purpose and what is it that you you know your vision and what is it that you're mm -hmm. trying to work towards then don't do it. Just don't do it just to be booked and busy, mm -hmm. just to be booked and busy because that's time that you can be putting into your own stuff and your own exactly. self. Exactly. Yeah. And especially when, and I think when you overdo it, meaning you try to book yourself so much and it's not quality, the quality that you actually want right, for right, yourself right. and for your right. brand, you t you're literally taking the time that God could be using to put something in that place to move you up in your career right when right. because you want to fill it with a spot that shouldn't even be there right 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 i was like you know what i'm okay with not being busy at times you know why because number one i got kids and that gives me more time right. with them so i can pour into them right but right. also also when it comes to other things that i want to accomplish and do learning to be in alignment with god having that feeling of when he's constantly telling you, like when he's saying something to you and you get stuck on it and you like, right. hold on. Cause I'm gonna tell you about a part, a chapter in your book. I'm getting into it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there was a chapter in your book and it said, um, at the end of it, what I love about your book is at the end of every chapter, most of the chapters, it has like a lesson for a person to do. Yeah, and I love oh, yeah. like that because then it gives you, it makes you think. It, yeah. And, I'm learning now, like, okay, I can't just bypass that part. No, I want to complete that to see what's going to happen. Right. So it kind of holds you accountable because I, I mean, yes, when people read my book, I don't want them to just be like, okay, I'm reading about her experience and things mm -hmm. from her perspective and how mm -hmm. she interprets certain things. I want you to now be able to think about what I just said and how mm -hmm. you can relate it to your life and how you can, what is your translation? What is your interpretation? of mm -hmm. this situation have you have you ever been in this shoes have you ever been in a place where you felt like this and you felt like that and what how did you mm -hmm. feel what did you do to yeah. change it you know so it makes you think for sure so it, it yeah. worked it worked Good. it did it did because i like I, I'm, I'm like revamping my whole place so i set aside my little um i want to say my mom space my prayer mm -hmm. time my time for me like they mm -hmm. say in the war room, because you talk about war room a little bit. You touched on war room, the movie. Yeah. And your, oh, and your, girl, I love that movie. I recommend it. I love everybody. that movie. Yeah. And I have this little, well, I have in my closet, because just like you said in your book, how you um, immediately changed your room, your mm -hmm. closet, whatever space you had. Girl, I went and I took, I took, I took one kid out of his room. I said, go in the, kid, go in the room with other kids. And I literally turned the whole room into wow. my war room. And my son was like, he didn't care. He was just like, my mama cares. But, um, and, and with that room, by me changing it, mm -hmm. like, as soon as you walk in that room, you can feel the spirit of God. Like, literally, wow. everything is just at peace. Like, wow. you know somebody praying in there. I was wow. literally going to meditate, pray, and I always fell asleep. And when I fell asleep, God would always talk to me and give wow. me ideas, give me just a whole bunch of things. I was at so such peace. So wow. now, but I gave my son back his room. And people thought I was weird for it because when they would come to my house, they was and when my son would tell them what I did, they would think, um, is something wrong with her? Is she okay? Like, what like what kind of room is this? <laughs> and I'm like, it's a room that I need at this time. Right. I need to be closer to God. I need to have a conversation. I need to be able to hear him through all the craziness that's going on in this world mm. and just around me. I need to hear him and I can't. Right. Hear him. So, wow. so you did anything means you did anything necessary to make yeah. sure you were in the place and, and you know the atmosphere was right to tap in. Yeah. So the, yeah, that's that's important for sure. So I did that again because I gave myself his room back. <laughs> 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 I, 
And because he, he know he's 15. He's like, Mom, stop. Come on. So yeah. I, um, I'm like, girl, you look like you 17. What you mean you got a 15 year old? I'm right. like, wait, it just it just registers. Like, did she just say I think she did say 15? What? Girl, he's 15. Girl. He's taller than me. Black don't crack for girl. sure. Not the, the Lord will bless you. You the look Lord like you're you. like in like 2021 <laughs> for sure and i'm not just saying that because i'm on this live you look like a baby i know girls well i was getting carded to skate when you didn't open them up so <laughs> but yes but now i have my own space and um in my house where that's particularly for that so that's where i would go and i would read your book i would read your book at night before i went to bed because i like to have wow. things all over my brain while I'm talking, well, while I'm sleeping. Because, you know, if you watch a scary movie, that's what you think about the whole night. Wow. You watch any type of thing. Whatever you're input, putting in your head, you're seeing. That's, that's amazing, man. Like, you know, you don't know, you don't understand what your comment just now just did to me. Because oftentimes we get, we, uh, you know, we, it can be discouraging sometimes where you just mm -hmm. feel like you're in this rut. And I'm going to just be transparent with y'all. Lately, I was just feeling like I'm in this rut. Like, I'm just like, God, I just can't shake this thing. Because you ever been in that place where life is not bad? It's mm -hmm. nothing bad. But mm -hmm. you just feel kind of stuck. Yep. And you just feel like you're just in this rut. Like, you just can't change. You just can't shake this thing. You're just a feeling of, like, heaviness and just feel mm -hmm. a little lost. Mm -hmm. And just feel like you're being tugged in so many different directions. And it's just like, I just, I just need to block everything out and just mm -hmm. not focus on nothing right now and just have a blank slate because mm -hmm. i just feel like really blah um so by you just saying that it just it, you don't know what it did to my spirit you just know that me writing me writing that mm -hmm. book was not in vain like nope. it, it was able to help someone you know what i mean like it made yeah, me just think like just like just to go back to just in stop being so distracted go back mm -hmm. to your purpose go back yeah. to where you where like re rebirth if you got to find some kind of fire reignite that purpose you're you're i know you want to do so many things you want to do acting you want to write you want to mm -hmm. do this mm -hmm. and you want to but go back to the purpose i gave you which is love after and everything that comes with that vision go back to that um mm -hmm. so i i needed to i needed to hear that because it just I lets me it lets me know that go back to the vision if 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 everything around you fails the vision is what's going to stick, mm -hmm. you know? So I thank you for that because I definitely, I, I'm not going to front. This week have been like a rough week for real. A rough it, week. But you know what? It happens because I was in a rut not too long ago. And one of my, yeah. um, I did a live with a girlfriend, Kiana. And, um, wait, my Kiana. I don't know. Kiana Cox Jones. No. Oh, okay. 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 Kiana May. She's a model. Okay, she's a friend of okay gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh -huh. And she has, um, she has, uh, her business is called Heal the Girl, which okay, I'll share gotcha. more of that. But gotcha, gotcha. she, um, so I was talking to her, and my sister was staying with me for a little while while she was pregnant. So, and you know, I get a chance to see my, tw she's my twin sister, so I get to see her every day. I get to spend time with her every day, see how her belly's growing and everything else. And then when it was time for her to have the baby, she moved out. Mm. And for that week, I couldn't shake it. I'm like, what is going on with me? I don't know what's going on. What, I don't know why I felt like I was in a rut mm. the whole entire time. I'm like, well, what's going on with life right now? I don't know why I can't shake this. And then she had to tell me, she was like, Catrice, it's because your sister's leaving. She's leaving you. You still will see her. But because y'all aren't going to be in such close proximity, it's, it's like, it's a different. She was like, it's your sister because she's leaving. Just know. It's going to pass. It's only temporary. And I tell people all the time, whatever you're going through is only temporary. Let God move. Maybe you have to go through that little process just for a little bit. Maybe you just sit down and breathe for a minute. Hear him. Yes. But but it happens. We all go through what? Even when Absolutely. we have our best moments, it's still, we wind up going through another rut later. So yeah, it's going to happen right. again. Right, but right. just know that it's only temporary. I tell people all the right. time, when it comes to your health, if you get bad news, trust and believe it's only temporary. You mm -hmm. have a choice. You have you can change this. So, yeah. so the when flood I don't last book, always. Huh? I say yeah. The the it, after the, it has to stop raining sooner or later. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But go ahead. Okay. I'm listening. 
so I read your book, right? So I'm, I, I wake up in the, so I read it at night. Mm -hmm. And then I read it. So I read it in the morning too, when I get up, cause that's my prayer time with the Lord. You know, I gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta bring it in. So I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, praying to God, talking to him. And then I'll go and I'll start reading your book and start um, journaling too, writing down, you know, your lessons. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, Catrice, you got where model self, you got your business that you're, you're working on that you want to accomplish, you want to do. Right. Okay. And for some reason, I've been asking God for the longest, what is the name of this business? What is it? And he never, he would, I would, I couldn't hear him to get it. So when I'm sitting down, I'm reading your book and I got to this lesson part and it said, what are your passions? I believe it. I should go get it right now. But it says like, what are your passions? What are you, what are you passionate about? So I started writing down what I'm passionate about. And then I put when models talk, I put, and I put an, something else and I just wrote it. And then I couldn't get past that name though. And I was like, Lord, is that you trying to tell me that's my name? That's the name of the company. <laughs> and I just started busting out laughing because I knew it was him saying, that's the name of your company. But the crazy thing is when I looked around, I had the name the whole time. I couldn't even see it. I couldn't even, I didn't even understand that he yeah. been gave it to me when I asked for it the first time, but your book helped me to, helped him to reveal it wow. in a different way to say, Patrice, that's the name you had it this whole time. I wow. literally had it written down in the book <laughs> wow. the whole entire time. <laughs> and it just opens up. It, and then the part where it says, what would you say to the lesson of, what would you say to, write a letter to the eight, oh, eight year old. Oh, is that the forgiveness? I think that's the forgiveness chapter. Write a no, letter to the. No, I got the forgiveness one. That's later on. But okay. the other one is, 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 um, is farther up. In the, okay, like, okay. A couple chapters in. Right, right, but right. But the eight-year-old you, that was really good because I really I wrote to the eleven-year-old me, but I wrote it. My daughter's eleven, that's why I wrote it. So I wrote it in a sense if I was her, and I was talking to her, but in me. And when I say, it definitely was an eye opener, because I even saved it because I'm gonna give it to my daughter when she gets older wow. and have her read it and say, Catrice, this is what you need to read too. Cause I named her after me. So Catrice, Catrice. Wow. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, and then the forgiveness one, that now, that opened up some can of worms because you know how you don't think that you really that upset. <laughs> Girl, that forgiveness one, I literally took some time off after writing the forgiveness chapter. I was healing <laughs> I it the the forgiveness chapter I pretty much took a few weeks off mm -hmm. when I was going through the forgiveness chapter and I was downloading because God was just like uh uh I'm not through with you yet uh -huh. <laughs> this book was for you first yep you thought you were just gonna write a book and go out here and be on your merry little way and try to inspire everybody else and not do the work uh -huh. like that forgiveness chapter sat me down for a few weeks and I was just like wow. like wow because when I when he when I was doing a, the, the forgiveness chapter a lot of stuff started to come to to fruit like a lot of stuff started to come back to my memory of mm -hmm. some things that I kind of normalized and mm. some things that I buried for years ago that I never really dealt with or fully healed mm -hmm. from. And sometimes you can just become numb to certain things yeah. or normalize certain things. And in your mind, because it kind of become normal, it, it no longer feels like it's a problem or an issue. Yeah. Because you somewhat normalized it, like made it mm -hmm. feel like it was okay. But then when you go back and you see the domino effect of, wait a minute, so that's the reason why I act this way or that's the reason why this happened or that's the reason why I did what I did or that's the reason why mm -hmm. I think this way. Mm -hmm. You really know that like some healing has to take place in yeah. order for you to be in alignment and walk in your divine purpose mm -hmm. and really like follow through with your, with your, with your visions and be whole. Yeah. There's a lot of healing that has to take place. And when you really dig deep, and yeah. you become more awakened, and your that that blind that 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 blind come off of your eye, that veil 
mm-hmm. and you big be, you begin to really see things differently and your mm-hmm. perception and your lens change you will get you will start to see a lot of things come to surface that you never knew lie dormant yeah things from like childhood sometimes mm-hmm. the little mm-hmm. boy in you is still healing or hurting and you've kind of numb you over the years through teenage and then 20s and sometimes even 30s and 40s and 50s mm-hmm. you've kind of been numb or normalized or shut down or just like ignore certain things that that little boy in you never fully healed from exactly or that little girl inside of you never fully healed from there's certain mm-hmm. things in you that's a little trigger or that's very um that's a trigger for you yeah that even now as an adult that you have to go back and say why is it that that always gets under my skin when people do that sometimes yeah. you're dealing with abandonment issues sometimes yeah. you're dealing with you know neglection Sometimes you're dealing with someone probably not keeping their words or promises. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, you have a thing when someone lied to you, you say you go from zero to a hundred real quick. Why do you get so bent yeah. out of check? So and when you get, when you, when you look back at it, um, or some people might be really promiscuous and you don't know why you're so promiscuous. Is it because you were touched when you were younger mm-hmm. in a sexual way? You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you, you have to go back and see why is it you do or think the way yeah. that you think or what have you normalized that aren't so normal. And sometimes you won't know and you might see it in your kid and mm-hmm. you might see a connection that God will show you certain things through your kids. Like, wow, mm-hmm. that's not my, like, yeah. it, will, it will just strict, it will strike a chord. Like, yeah, it, it's so crazy when, when just life starts speaking back to you. Yes, girl. Yeah. Because I was like, um, first of all, the first one had me crying. And I'm like, I didn't ask to be crying. We get fucked. <laughs> <Right. laughs> I should be tearing up. And then when we got to that part about forgiveness, it was like anger. And I was like, why am I so mad? But then I, I, st- I kept writing, writing that forgiveness letter. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, you did this, you did that. And then it was like, okay. Wow. Let me get it together because when you're when you're upset with somebody, you don't realize to the extent that you're actually upset with that person. Right, right. By writing it down, it just shows you how deep rooted it is and how much you need to uproot it. Yes. So you can, so you can have a process of healing. Yes. And, and sometimes you don't mind. know unless you write it down. Mm-hmm. That's why writing that letter and writing it writing it down makes it so real because sometimes mm-hmm. when it's in your thoughts and you think about it it's so quick to dismiss it like oh, okay whatever mm-hmm. when you write it you're taking time and you're reliving and you're putting yeah. it on paper and you start to visualize and you start to remember and reference back yeah and then it becomes more real versus just you thinking about it it's easy to brush it over yeah when you write it down and you write the stuff that you need to forgive or think mm-hmm. that you need to, you know, whoever hurt you. I don't care if it was somebody who stole $5 in, in the fifth grade from you. Girl. You'd be surprised that some people still hold on to that. <laughs> and you see somebody you at a class reunion 20 years. But remember that time you pushed me down in the play field, in the playground, and you stole my dollar. Yeah. And you'd be surprised people still remember that. But that thing <laughs> triggers something in them even as an adult. Yeah. So I'm telling you, man, it'd be sometimes the simplest thing that's usually huge to somebody else. You don't know. Yeah. But I'm happy that the book the book and the, the lessons after each chapter was able to be um, you know, like yes. life changing for you. Yeah. You yes. was able to I was like, ooh. And it made me actually want to continue reading. Stay in stay in that mode of yeah. reading reading every morning and getting that in especially things that can help me because the next thing i'm reading is the bob the franklin book and that's produced by faith have you read that yet no is that new no it's old because i've watched <laughs> I've, I've read his weight the weight i've, I've read the truth never. about men the truth about men was really good because it allowed me to think it, it allowed me to see things from the male's perspective because of course <laughs> male and female we all think differently so the way Devon Franklin broke down the truth about men and how men think and why they're so have this hunting mentality and why they 
have you know you know men have this doggy dog instinct so sometimes a lot of guys have to go through this whole purging and cleansing and maturity to really like um to really like get rid of those doggy instincts you mm -hmm. know um as to why some guys do the things that they do mm -hmm. um and it's just a certain way that their their mind is just wired so devon franklin the truth about men really helped me to really yeah, learn and tap into the way men think and why they think the way they think so that as a woman we mm -hmm. can understand them more because i'm a mom of a son yeah. So I want to understand how my son think. I want to understand why he think the way he think. I want to understand some of the things mm -hmm. and the struggle that he's going to be going through as a young man, going through changes, mm -hmm. going through puberty, becoming a man, um, becoming a teenager, and why mm -hmm. he thinks the way he thinks so that I can understand him and I can learn him. Because yeah. oftentimes, as women, we quick to say, oh, my God, why do men think the way they Why Why do men act like that? And he's like... <laughs> There's a, they yes. probably saying the same thing about us. Like, oh, my God, yes. why these women, they just whine and complain, and they just, oh, my God, they act crazy, <laughs> Karens, and they just annoying, and they want to bicker and whine all day, and emotional, and just an emotional wreck. Like, they probably say the same thing about us, you know? So That's it just, I feel like we all have to get to a place of understanding yeah. and being open-minded and understanding I don't look at stuff surface level no more. When I see and I and I have a conversation with someone and I study someone, I look beyond what they're saying. I look at, mm -hmm. I listen and look at the things that they don't say, the non-verbal mm -hmm. things that they're not mm -hmm. saying, and mm -hmm. certain way they talk and say the things that they sing. Um, mm -hmm. I look at stuff like that. So it's good to just have a level of understanding when you're dealing with someone from a, a totally different walk of life, you know. <laughs> Is that because you uh got your master's in um, professional counseling? No, <laughs> so that was life. Girl, I don't remember some of the things that I learned in college. You, 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 for real. I mean, like, do I remember what I learned in high school? No. <laughs> do I, I don't remember some of the stuff I learned in high school, middle school, college. I don't. If you don't use it, you lose it. It's called the college yeah. of life. Life experiences is yeah. what you want to teach. That's the best college you can do is when you can learn from your life experience. When you can learn from your yesterdays is the best degree that you can have. It's all it, it's that thing called life, man. Um I agree. I agree. And just not wanting to repeat the, the same grade of life, you know, the same level of life. Just wanting to know I'm kind. Um, so mm -hmm. I don't repeat the same grade of life. <laughs> so yes, we, yeah, but Devon Franklin's book is good. Like, if especially if you if you you know that you want to be in a relationship, and for me, I do see myself mm -hmm. getting married again, and I do. I'm a hopeless romantic. Like, I love love, and I just feel like now I'm in my thirties. I I understand life. I understand love. I understand you know mm -hmm. the the sacrifice that come with love and the selflessness and the vulnerability and the the transparency that comes with true love and i feel like in my mm -hmm. 20s i wasn't ready um but now in my 30s i'm ready so the, i feel like yeah. the next person that i marry will have like the best version of me for sure yeah so when it's that yeah. time girl it'll happen i'll invite you to yeah. my wedding at first i wasn't going i was girl, like, I, don't I, don't wedding. I just want to be on somebody's beach but girl after all this hard work and working on me oh i'm celebrating I know I'm that's right. Celebrating. I know that's right. Yeah. One thing I I I know I bench I eventually want and that is to get married. I've never yeah. been married, but yeah. I I know that that's in my cards. At, girl, as, I see it for you. We gonna touch and agree on that. Know. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because, absolutely. And I feel like the person like I used to tell people all the time, like the person I was. No, I just told somebody this the other day. I was like, the person that I was a week ago, by reading your book, is not the person that I am today. Wow. That was definitely a transformation. But it took me reading your book. It took me saying, let me oh reach out God. to Justin and wow. ask him to an interview. Thank God. <laughs> wow. I didn't you know just never know, man. Because I remember when you came on Shelly's show for Single on Saturday Night, and you talked about your book. 
but I really didn't get a chance to really read it. I didn't get a chance yeah. to get it. I didn't get a chance to really even um, really hear what you were saying. Right. But by me actually doing a one-on-one -on -one interview with you yeah. and, and actually getting the book, because I like to make sure I'm doing my homework as, best, yeah, as much as wow. I can. Thank you. So the person that I was a week ago, the person that I was three months ago before all this even started, as far as the pandemic is concerned, wow. I'm a completely different person. Oh my I am gosh. trying to be unapologetically myself. I yes. Because a lot of times, on, you know, man. a lot of people, they won't, they won't say, this is why, this is what you did to hurt me. This is what, you know, you don't want to have those hard, I, I've had an issue with having hard conversations with people because I didn't want it to come off as me being this mean person because I knew it was going to come out wrong. It right, wasn't going right. to come out nothing. So I will always brush things to the side and not have the conversation. But now I'm like, no, because I'm, I'm first of all, I'm a grown behind woman. And mm -hmm. I need people to under, know how to treat me. Right. No know that I am not the same person that I once was. Right. So the same things you could used to do, you cannot do no more. Mm. And I think it's just important for people to get your book, number one. Thank you. Read it. Go through the process of actually taking it in and doing the steps. Just like they say, you have a, there are steps to this, there's levels right. to this. Right. Actually take your time. It's self-growth. It's, right. it's, um, it's purpose. Right. And it's you crazy. Have to keep moving. And and, and yeah. everybody think that healing is an overnight process. You think that, oh, I feel good. I, I I forgave this person. I'm good now. I'm healed. And then next thing you know, a few months from now, it's another dimension that you have to unlock. And then another year from now, it's another it's another mm -hmm. level that you have to unlock. And it's just like you're constantly growing and yeah. learning yourself. Yeah. And then it's crazy and just a moment of transparency, right? Mm -hmm. Although me and my ex-husband, we're in a good space as, as mm -hmm. co-parent. It's crazy. The other day, about a couple weeks ago, I was sleeping and I woke up like four or five o'clock in the morning. And it's like, I heard the Holy Spirit was just like, you need to, you need to apologize to your ex-husband. And I'm like, apologize for <laughs> what? <laughs> You know, right? And you just like, and he just started to 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 just like apologize to him because oftentimes it's not just for him; it's for you, just for you to be, just release certain things, or just 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 for it's for him to just maybe this healing or that this apology is not for you. It's, don't think about don't don't let pride get in the way. It's yeah. for what I'm doing in him too. Yeah. And he just, I'm just like, God, but I don't understand what am I apologizing for? I forgave him. He forgave me. We're in a great space. We good. Yeah. He just like, no, do you think that I, I, I like, I, I can hear clear, clear as day. You're in a place where you want to start dating now. You want to see your stuff getting married again. Do you feel mm -hmm. like you did the best that you could as a wife? Sometimes mm -hmm. when, when you shine the mirror on yourself mm -hmm. and you look like, take the other person out the way take them completely out of the picture. Do you think that you did your job? Do you mm. think that you did, you were the best version of yourself and did everything that you could have done to make sure everything was successful? And I'm like, no, I think there are some things I did great and there are some things mm -hmm. I could have done differently and I could have learned. And he was just like, that's yeah. it. Just apologize. Yeah. And whatever that apology meant for him, you don't know what it's going to do for him. Yeah. And yeah. how it's going to release certain things in him. But yeah. I was just like, it though, although I still couldn't make sense of it, I still was obedient. And mm -hmm. it took me a couple of days because I'm like, I, don't, I, can't st I still can't see the point. I don't, just, I don't see the point. <laughs> but I was I obedient. Point, okay, well. I was obedient. And um, I, I, I just sent a voice note like, hey, I, I was praying. And I don't know where this came from. But I'm led in my spirit to just say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. For whatever it is that I did or didn't do or could have done differently, I'm sorry mm -hmm. if I didn't know how to love the right way as a wife. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I didn't know how to listen to you or know your love languages or be there for you or whatever it is or any way, shape, or form that I felt short as a wife. I apologize mm -hmm. because I was still young. I was still a, a, a I was still wet behind the ears. I didn't know yeah. me. I didn't know myself. I didn't know my purpose. I didn't know 
yeah. who, who I was as a wife, who I was as a mother, who, how to be a wife, because I didn't have a blueprint. I didn't yeah. see a successful marriage. And neither did you. Like, you know, my mom didn't have a successful marriage. My mom was in an abusive relationship when I came from Jamaica to the States. My dad wasn't in a successful relationship. You know, um, I didn't have a blueprint. So I'll, whatever this apology means for you, I just want you to know I sincerely apologize. And that apology was definitely, like, when I tell you I'm so happy I was obedient, it did something in him that was way bigger than me. Way bigger than me. And he called me, and it just sounded like he was on the verge of tears, like, thank Aww. you. Thank you so much. Like, mm -hmm. I needed that. Because I was so, I was kind of mad and angry, and I felt like there were things that you felt short in as well. And not, mm -hmm. it wasn't no kumbaya, like, we're going back yeah. together, nothing like that. No, we cool. <laughs> we, we like, we, we here. Cool. We here. We cool. Exactly. But it was just that kind of thing, like, you know, you just never know sometimes just being obedient and sometimes sorry or apologizing or just being a bigger person is not always about you. You don't know what that's going to do for the other person or how it's going to yeah. struck accordance. Oftentimes we get so caught up in pride and yeah. being so proud to apologize. Even if, even if I wasn't wrong in this situation, I'm apologizing for whatever it is that in your mind, I fell short of. Yeah. Whatever it is that I fell short of. I apologize because we all think differently. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not his mind. I don't think the way he thinks, but whatever it is that's in your mind and whatever expectations you put on me that I didn't meet, I apologize for that. Yeah. And that was something that he needed to work on to heal for himself. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even necessarily for me. So I'm happy that I was obedient for sure, but I'm well, happy. I'm afraid. Um, uh, that the book was able to move you and and to yeah. help you and and to to grow and evolve and um mm -hmm. it, it just like thank you so much for that it definitely put some fire under me to write my second yeah. book that i've been working on and i'm yeah. just, like in a rut <laughs> um but i definitely <laughs> want to finish this book um um definitely and 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 i want to release it next year it's not a memoir but it's definitely okay. in a self-help category inspirational for sure yeah. Okay, well, I'll be getting that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> but Thank I wanted you so to much. know, I wanted to know, what is your production company's name? Because I mean, I know you mentioned your production company. What is what is the name? It, it is new, so I literally just, like, LLC'd everything, but it's just mm -hmm. since Media Productions, LLC. Okay. Yeah. So I'll be doing my first series under that, which is Love After. So I did, mm -hmm. um, I am going to have a Love After TV series. No, it's not about my book, but mm -hmm. it's inspired by some of the things that uh, that are in my book that the characters mm -hmm. will relate to. Okay. Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely have drama, suspense, a lot mm -hmm. of comedy. So I want it to be a mixture of a lot of things that like it will make you laugh, will make you cry, will make you think, it will make you grow and evolve. Um, mm -hmm. so it's definitely, you know, I really wanted to go into production later this year, but I'm like, okay, let me take this time to really, you yeah. know, breathe, do it the right way. I don't want to rush. And then if, of course, with this pandemic, people are still yeah. kind of on ice and eggshell. Yeah. So hopefully this presidential election will open up a lot of doors for me as well. Like, I'm like, I'm glad I waited. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah. with homegirl being Jamaican and everything. Hopefully that will put Caribbean on the map. Nah, I know that's right. I know that's so, right. Well, we I'm only excited. have. Like a Thank you so much, Eric. He said good work. <laughs> Thank you Thanks, so much, Eric, for all your comments and your uh, support. <laughs> Thank you. So we only have a minute left. So I definitely want for whoever wants to um, know more about Justin's book, go to I. What I'm about to say. TheLoveAfter.com. Yeah, TheLoveAfter.com. And it's a one-stop shop. Once you're there, it's everything. My acting page is on there. The book is on there. If you mm -hmm. want to autograph, copy from me with the gift bag and the pen mm -hmm. and all of that bookmark, it's best to get it directly from me. And if you're on there and you want to get the Audible, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, TheLoveAfter.com. Everything is there. And also... Get her book because I think I believe next month on the Velvet Rope. 
Is I'm, am I saying that right? Behind the Velvet Rope Behind. show. Yeah, it'll be the next, yeah. All month we're talking about love after relationship. How you loving? Yes. So, yeah. so make sure y'all tune into that. And we got about a couple.